This might sound strange, but in many countries, energy providers will pay you instead of you paying them. And all you have to do is make slight adjustments when you use electricity. You don't even need a solar and battery installation, and you can earn a sizable amount of money. Stay with me and I'll show you how. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. So the relationship between you and your energy provider is quite simple. They provide you with electricity and in turn you pay for what you use. But there can be specific occasions where if you use less electricity than you normally would, your energy provider will pay you instead. That sounds crazy, right? But in many countries that's what actually happens and nearly everyone has the opportunity to take part. You don't even need to have your own solar and battery installation. But if you do, it can be even more lucrative, and I'll explain why later in the video. So why would energy companies do this? To answer that, we need to understand a little bit more about electricity demand and supply. Here is a typical electricity demand curve for a country. This one just happens to be the UK. There will be a mix of energy generation sources in that country, including nuclear, gas, wind and solar, and these will all add up together to meet the demand at all times of the day and night. An important part of the curve is where the demand peaks, and in the UK this happens in the evening sometime between 4 and 7 pm. The country will need to ensure there is sufficient supply to meet that peak demand. Let's examine then how this is achieved, and again we'll use the UK as an example country. Here's the level of demand at say lunchtime. Let's stack up the various energy sources available to meet that demand. It starts with nuclear, which makes up 20 to 25% of the demand. Nuclear plants are great because they provide a highly consistent level of supply and they're classed as clean energy. Next up are hydroelectric dams. In the UK, they're only able to contribute a few percentage points to the supply mix, but unlike nuclear, they're highly controllable. Their supply can be ramped up and down in less than a minute. They're also very green. Then we have my two favourite sources, wind and solar. While both are exceptionally clean, their supply levels fluctuate significantly, often changing from day to day, making them quite unpredictable. And there's still a gap to fill. And to fill it, we have gas. Gas is of course a fossil fuel, it's dirty and it's very expensive, but it does act as an excellent filler. There are around 30 gas turbines in the UK, and just like hydro, their combined supply can be ramped up and down at very short notice. For example, if wind and solar is higher than expected at any point in time, the level of gas supply can be reduced to match demand. And as the level of demand increases towards the evening peak, the level of gas supply can increase with it. Even if wind and solar is less than expected, gas is usually able to fill the gap. But there might be occasions where there is exceptional demand and a low amount of wind and solar. And when this happens, there is not enough gas supply to meet that level of demand. So we have a problem, but it doesn't mean the lights go out. The UK has one other resource at its disposal, coal. And in times of stress, some of the UK's remaining coal plants are put on standby so that they can be quickly fired up to fill the gap. And if you thought gas was expensive, then coal is really expensive as well as being dirty. There is another way to match supply and demand without resorting to things like coal. Rather than increasing supply, we can instead reduce overall demand in the country. In addition to getting large-scale industry to reduce its demand, if consumers can be persuaded to reduce their individual demand as well, then we don't need to burn coal. And a proportion of the money saved from that can be shared with businesses and consumers alike. And that's the basis for demand flexibility schemes around the world. Everybody wins, not least the planet. Okay, so how do you get a hold of this money? Well, these schemes are not available in every country, so check with your energy provider to see if they're running such a scheme in your country. And you'll also need to have a smart meter installed at your property so that the energy provider can see the amount of electricity you're consuming every 30 minutes. And if you don't have a smart meter, your energy provider should be able to arrange this for you. Just drop them an email. Here's a timeline then of how these schemes typically work. Once you've signed up to the scheme, at some point later you'll receive a notification of a savings event coming up in the next one to two days. The event period itself might be one or two hours long and you'll likely need to respond in advance to say that you'll be taking part in that event. This allows the energy provider to estimate the level of demand reduction based on all the responses received. Then when the event starts, 
To gain the most profit, it's simply a case of not using electricity as much as you can. For example, if you would normally be cooking at that time, you could prepare things in advance or simply start cooking immediately after the event. The same with any heavy duty appliances like a dishwasher. These could wait until after the event finishes before starting. Finally, a few days after the event, you'll be notified how much energy you saved and how much profit you made. But how can your energy provider determine how much energy you didn't use? What they typically do is take an average of the energy you use at the same time as the event, but over the last couple of weeks. They then subtract the energy that you use during the event from that average to get a value. Now in terms of the actual price per kilowatt hour you'll get paid, it depends on your energy provider and the country that you're in. But here in the UK, where the typical price per kilowatt hour of energy is 27 pence, the demand flexibility scheme is paying up to a whopping four pounds per kilowatt hour, 15 times as much. That's incredible. And I think it gives a good indication of the costs incurred by your country trying to meet high demand with fossil fuels. Now, if you have a solar and battery installation, it gets even better. Not only can you benefit from saving energy, but you can also set your battery to export energy during the savings event as well. So how does that work then? Well, looking back at our supply and demand chart again, as well as demand being reduced, any consumer export happening during the savings event adds to the supply mix. And that means less fossil fuel having to be burned, gas as well as coal. And for every kilowatt hour you are able to export above what you would usually export at that time, is typically paid at the same rate. In the UK scheme, as we saw, that's £4. Now, I was in contact with Rick Fish recently. He has a very large property. And as you can see here, it takes three Tesla Powerwalls to manage his day-to-day -day energy requirements, one on each phase. In his Tesla app, Rick can program all three Powerwalls in advance to automatically export during a savings event. That's a combined power output of 15 kilowatts. I'll leave to you to work out just how much passive income that is. Now, I know Rick's setup is not typical of a UK home, but if a million homes can export at a rate of just three kilowatts, that's three gigawatts, or roughly 6% of peak UK demand. If you want to find out more about how the UK scheme works, both with and without a solar and battery installation, there are a couple of videos that explain things very well. First, Dan of Dan EV Solar, and secondly, Shan at Everything Home. I've put links to both these videos in the description. So everything we've talked about so far is where demand is higher than supply. But given the variability of renewables, especially wind, there are times when supply is greater than demand. But the grid must be balanced at all times. And so when there is, say, more wind than expected, what typically happens is that a percentage of the wind turbines in the country are instructed to stop generating. And you'll have seen this if you're driving around on a windy day and the turbines are still. And the operators of those turbines get compensated for that loss of generation. There is another way though, and that is to increase demand. And the easiest way to increase demand is to incentivize usage. And the best way to do that is to reduce the cost of electricity drastically. Some energy providers offer smart tariffs to consumers that track the wholesale rate, including Octopus Energy in the UK with their Agile tariff. Here's an example where the Agile price recently went negative, meaning you are actually getting paid to use energy. A great time to charge your EV and get tons of washing and drying done, and earn money at the same time. Wind and solar generation capacity is growing continually right across the world. And this will inevitably make the job of balancing national grids more challenging. So as a result, I can see negative pricing events becoming increasingly common. And so it's a good idea to make sure that you're with an energy provider who is ready to help you benefit from that. For example, if you're living in the UK, then you should take a look at Octopus Energy. Their thinking is just so far ahead of the competition. They launched their Agile tracking tariff over five years ago, and they haven't stopped innovating since. Switching to Octopus is very easy, and if you use my referral code, they'll pay you £50. I'll also be paid £50, and this goes a long way to keeping this channel running. Thank you. Okay, that's it from me in this video. I hope you found it interesting. Please take a few seconds to click like, as this helps spread the word. And if you subscribe at the same time, you'll be first in line to see my future videos. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.